Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I've got more of the Jira spoke for you. That's right, ServiceNow and Jira. We're going to integrate the two. And in this use case, we're focused on projects in ServiceNow being uh, having projects created or updated in Jira. In this particular video, we're going to focus on the create part, and in a future video, we'll do the update part because there's a little more work involved on the update part. But let's take a look at what I got up behind me. I've got a project here, leave of absence, no work authorization. Notice I've assigned this to myself. I'm going to use that as the trigger or as the filter for what should be sent over to Jira because my user account is actually in Jira. And we're going to start with a flow. Now, I've got one already set up here. So you didn't have to painstakingly watch me create it, but we're going to walk through it. First, I have whether a project is created or updated. And then, of course, what I just told you, I filter, I'm filter. i filtering on whether the project manager is Justin Meadows. That's me. And I want to do it for each unique change because what the use case here is there might be updates to a project. We need to update that information in Jira. So I want every unique change, including an update or including a create, to go over. And then my first thing is going to be if a Jira project is already created. How do we know? Well, when we create a Jira a project, we're going to update the project record in ServiceNow's correlation display to have this string, my Jira integration. Now, I just picked this up out of nowhere. It could have been my cool Jira integration, my awesome Jira integration, my horrible Jira integration. I just chose my Jira integration, and that's what I'm going to use for all of my projects that I send over to Jira. The important piece is that to use the same thing, because we're going to use this in a couple of places to determine what to do. So if that exists, then that means I've already created it in Jira, because that's what happens when you create it. And then that's going to be the next video. So you see I've got a placeholder activity there. We need to update the Jira project record and we need a custom action in order to do that. But in the meantime, because we're just starting this, if it's not already in Jira, then that means we've got to create it. So then the else is true and we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we're going to do I actually kind of stumbled on this one a little bit. We need to look up the project manager's user information in Jira. And I could not find a lookup user um, action in the Jira spoke, which was really weird. So I'm using the lookup user stream in the Jira spoke. And if I get my head out of the way, you can see there that this particular one allows us to return a uh, list of users and we specify how many pages or I guess how many users are in each uh, page um, and then the query so we can query things like display name and email address to find the users we're looking for and we're going to get back some really important stuff what we need is we need that account ID and I believe we need the display name now we have all this other stuff which is fine uh, but we shouldn't really need that what I did in mine is I actually searched for uh, let me move my head back over to the right. I search for where the employee or the project records man project manager's email address. So that's my query. So I've just basically said, hey, there's the trigger. Go to the project record. Look at the project manager. We'll scroll down to project manager. Uh, and then let's pull that project manager's email address, which is in the E's right there. And that's going to be my search string or my query when I look up users. Now, I know I'm only going to get one back. But this particular thing is actually going to return possibly a collection of users. And so when you configure this, it's going to automatically default to a for each item in the lookup user stream. All right, so that's fine. That's fine. We know we're only going to get back one. But be careful when you're designing this. You may get back more than one. Um, so you may need some if logic before you go and do anything to see if you've got the user you're looking for. So just be wary of that. And then I'm going to set some flow variables. Now, the flow variables, let's go ahead and kill that help screen. I'll go ahead and show you. No big deal there. My lead account ID and my project lead, this is an ID and this is a name. And I'm going to have them both as strings. So when I loop through that, I know I'm only getting one. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the lead account ID to what comes back from that lookup user stream. So if we look at, my head's in the way again. If we look up the lookup user stream, we go to users and we should see an account ID. So that's what I chose there. And for the project lead, let's go ahead and get out of there. Um, I did the same thing, but changed the display name. So look up users, user, and then display name. And that's what's showing there. So if I hover over each one of those, you should see that account ID and display name. We're going to store that as a variable um, because we need to use that to create the project, which is happens to be 
the next step. So this is creating the project in JIRA. So the project key, again, your mileage may vary. You may want to do this differently. I chose to use the project number. So if I just scroll down here to number, that's what I'm going to have as the project ID. So trigger, project record, and then the number. That's what I chose. So if I hover over that, you'll see there it should say number for the project record. For the name, I chose the project name. For the account lead or lead account ID, I'm using the flow variable. So you just click on the picker here, flow variables, lead account ID. Same thing for the project lead, flow variables, and click on the project lead name. So those are coming from there. And the description, I chose the project description. So trigger, project record, and there should be a description field. If we scroll down here, uh, and there is description, okay? Simple, 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 not that complicated. And we've already tested, we could talk to Jira, so all this stuff should work without any issues. Now that we've created the project in Jira though, we need to make ServiceNow aware that that project exists over in Jira and they should be in sync. Um, so we're gonna update the project record that triggered this whole flow. We're gonna set the correlation display to my Jira integration. Remember, we could have set that to anything, but we chose my Jira integration. You can see it here on the if statement, my Jira integration. So those things need to match. So we're gonna go ahead and set that, and then we're gonna set the correlation ID field of the project record to the ID of the project. So if we go to that create project, you'll see in the project field, we have ID there as something we can choose. I just realized my head might have been in the way a couple of those things, but so create project, project ID, and then the ID. So that's gonna be stored in service now so that the next time there's an update and it runs through this flow, it's gonna stop here. And it's never gonna to go to this create place because it already knows the project exists. Last thing I thought was just a nice finishing touch is we're gonna add a work note to the project called Jira Project Create Successfully, project URL, and then add the project URL. You can see that under create project, go into the project, and there's the URL. So nicely done, we can handle all that and everything will be there and this should successfully create a project Project. Now remember, I've got this project here, there's no work notes on it, and if we go back out of screen, it should have no, um, no correlation ID or correlation display. So here's the leave of absence, and I'll just highlight it here, the entire row so you can see it. And notice, um, I'll just, I'm gonna have to scroll over to the right here for a second. Uh, let's just scroll that way. There we go. I got both of my fields in view now. So there's 10018 project leave of absence and notice my correlation ID and my correlation display values are blank at the moment. So this hasn't been synchronized and that means we're ready to test. Let's go ahead and check Jira. Make sure it doesn't exist over there. We'll hit the refresh button. There's all my projects. Uh, I don't have anything for this leave of absence project. We'll let that refresh here. All right, everything finished refreshing. So we'll move that over to the screen and we'll go ahead and test this. So I'm gonna use the test one here. Notice this flow isn't active yet because we're still building. And I'm gonna select that leave of absence project that has me assigned as the project manager. So there we go, leave of absence, no work authorization. I'm not gonna add any change fields. I don't wanna run it in the background. I wanna run it in the foreground so I know when this is done and I can go check everything to see if it worked. So that's running and we'll let that finish. All right, my test is finished running. Let's check out Jira and see what's new over there. So here is uh, the Jira instance. I'm just gonna click refresh again and we should see, yes sir, we do have a new project for leave of absence, no work authorization. Project key is the project number, so there's that 10018. We have the lead as Justin Meadows, there it is. So everything worked great there. I can open this and start working on this project in Jira. Now let's take a look at what that looks like in ServiceNow. Let's go back to that project and we're just gonna refresh this list and we should see both the correlation display and correlation ID got updated according to our flow and there it is. My Jira integration is the display and the ID is 10006, which is the ID of the project record. If we open that project record up, let's, we should have a work note saying that the project record was created and a URL linking us to that. And sure enough, if we scroll down to the notes, there it is, Jira project successfully created and there's the project URL and my instance name, which I'm gonna have to blur out, but there's that project ID, 10006. So that's all it took. In the next video, we're gonna go over the top part here, and that's it, the project already exists. How do we update the project? And we're gonna create a custom action to do that. In the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in synchronizing or sending projects from ServiceNow to Jira. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.